we've been joined in studio by Professor Godfrey Bob King. This is the first of at least the four dates that I have with him on this show before the elections. <laughs> professor Godfrey Bob King is a professor of finance at the University of Ghana Business School. Professor Godfrey, good morning. Good Thank morning. For and good morning to our first and my co panelists here. Thank you. I understand some of you, but the two of you were floor mates. Yes. Mm. Yes, so I, and he, I was his and floor he, rep. And he attempted pounding me. You see? <laughs> 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 no, we're no, we oh, we, 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 we brought proper life. If you are not from that, you don't talk about your holes. If you are not from that, you don't talk about your holes. You are the gateway to where? You are the gateway to the whole universe. The vandal. That is common. We rule. It's the vandal law. No, no, no. You're not a vandal. Be shy of where your hole is. If you're not a vandal, be shy. Why can't you be walking around and then be advertising the fact that you have mental problems? Why can't you get on the street that you are proud of it? Be shy of your home. Don't let your children hear that you went to that place. It's in the screen. It's okay. Continue your children say that you are also walking naked on the street. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. No comments. That's a nice way of welcoming you. Okay. But, but that leads us to our, our next conversation, really, on the, on the matter of the state of affairs. In fact, the, one of, a number of the urgent businesses that the NPP caucus in Parliament wants Parliament to be recalled for borders on the economy. Uh, you know, these uh, tax exemptions and then also a number of these bills as well. What, what is your diagnosis of the state of affairs? Because continuously I hear the finance minister, the president, talk about the fact that the indicators are trending towards pre-COVID conditions, where we are now. Quick one. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Yes, of course, we can associate with some level of recovery, but we are not there yet. Okay. And then also, if you want to celebrate this recovery, then you want to also see to it that within the context of the price that Ghanaians, um, including pensioners and all others, have had to pay through haircuts, through um, higher taxes, expenditure rationalization, and all of that. So I think that um, we've paid a very uh, heavy price for this recovery. And, and the point also is that this is not a recovery that is broad-based. Mm. It's also not a recovery that is people-focused, right? So it's a recovery it's that... that's people-focused. Yeah. Because if you look at the data, even from the World Bank, that in 2022, Bank of Ghana's inspired inflation alone pushed over 850,000 Ghanaians into poverty. Mm -hmm. The question is whether this recovery also took them along. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then also, if you look at the World Bank poverty indicators, I mean, we are not even talking about poverty at the lower end. Lower middle income and upper middle income poverty is also rising. So this is a crisis that did not only affect the core poor at the base, but also affected the middle class, both at the lower middle class level and then the upper middle class level. Then again, if you look at the stability we are talking about and the sacrifice, the concern is whether we have not traded off medium to long term survivability mm -hmm. for immediate stability. And the reason you need to look at that is that if you look at the, the taxes, mm -hmm. and if you look at where we have kept policy rates, and if you look at what, apart from that, all the measures Bank of Ghana has put in place mm -hmm. to, to mop up excess liquidity, all in the name of eliminating demand related inflationary pressures, the reality is that lending to private sector that is supposed to be the engine of growth that holds the job creation capacity of our economy is increasingly being undermined and we are imposing restrictions on the growth drivers of the of the economy so you cannot have this in the midst of this recovery and 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 say let's celebrate so i think that we need we need to be conscious and then also we need to be sympathetic with the reality because we've been there before right Usually with IMF-supported programs, you pay a heavy price in the media to have macroeconomic stability. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't last. It doesn't last. It doesn't last. Okay. And, uh, and, and in fact, in all sincerity, it will, be, it will be sad for us to celebrate an inflation of 21.5%.
by world average is still very high. Mm. Come to think of it, that September last year to September this year, prices on the average have gone up by 21.5%. Okay, mm. in, an, in an economy where income levels are very low, st salaries really have, have not kept pace mm. with price development. In an economy where food inflation is higher than non-food inflation, in an economy where imported inflation is actually lower than locally produced inflation, Okay, in an economy where uh, between um, 42 to 44% of household expenditure is on food. So when you see food prices going up that much, you should be concerned because the impact is going to be very huge. In an economy where job, job, uh, uh, GDP growth has not been job rich, mm -hmm. right? we have celebrated jobless growth over the years. Even now that we talk about gold economy, and our economy is largely gold economy now either from responsible mining or irresponsible mining. But the reality is that the mining sector in the last 12, 15 years actually has not created decent jobs. Has not. I see. And has not. And uh, I, I, I see the Ghana Sasuka Service data, and even with the growth we're experiencing now in the indicators, it is driven by the mining sector. Yes, and it's not... And you are saying that... Yeah, it's not job rich. If we are talking about decent employment generation, especially in the former wage economy, mm -hmm. where they will also be contributing to direct income tax and the rest of them, right. we haven't seen that from mining and quarrying in the last 15 years. That is not the only thing. If you look at poverty, if you look at inequality, mm -hmm. and you put all these things together, mining and quarrying in the last 15 years or so really hasn't delivered on, 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 those, on those lines. So if you look at the, 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 the data, mm -hmm. even though we have been concerned over the years mm -hmm. that Ghana has not benefited optimally right. from the mining fiscal regime and all of that, even with responsible mining, mm -hmm. okay, we have not. And now that we are even doing more irresponsive, irresponsible mining, mm -hmm. then it's, going to, it's getting worse. The reason it's getting worse is that this is this deposit. We are not making optimal use of it. Even even if we are we are talking about environmental degradation, it the fact that even with the large scale industrial miners, mm -hmm. they are not even observing all the environmental management practices. Right. Even with large scale, mm -hmm. highly regulated. Right and the human rights abuse and all of that. Evidence exists to suggest that. So come to think about artisanal, small-scale awesome. mining, and now add that to even illegal mining. So the environmental destruction and all of that is huge. The other thing to bear in mind is that the Swiss aid has actually done a report, and they are telling us that between 2012 and 2022, mm -hmm. 115 point five billion billion worth of gold was actually smuggled out of Africa. Repeat that again. Between 2012 mm -hmm. and 2022, mm -hmm. $115.3 billion worth of gold was actually smuggled out of Africa. There were three countries that were contributing significantly to that gold smuggling. Yes. Ghana, Mali, Zimbabwe. Ghana. Okay. Now, th th that same report and other studies mm -hmm. are equally documenting that Togo, Benin, and other countries that traditionally were not known, were not known as uh, good exporting countries are now showing up in the data strongly simply because of gold smuggling from Ghana mm -hmm. to those borders, through our porous borders, and essentially to offset regulatory burden, the taxes and the rest of them. So, so apart from the fact that even with the, with the responsible mining that we have been doing over the years, we have not benefited optimally. There is this new phenomenon where we are talking about artisanal, small-scale, irresponsible mining, where the bulk of the gold are actually smuggled, not declared. And we are losing the revenue in volumes and the fiscal revenue from that as well. But look at the interesting thing. When you look at the data from both Ghana Statistical Service and then uh, from Bank of Ghana, mm -hmm. United Arab Emirates is now our major uh, export destination country. You know why? No. It's gold export and gold smuggling. Mm. Gold export and smuggling? Yes. And also the gold for oil program. Okay, because approximately 85% mm -hmm. 
per studies of all artisanal small scale mining yeah. are exported to United Arab Emirates. Typically, majority of them smuggled. So the concern that we all should have is the fact that gold could have transformed our economy. Even with the mining we have done over the years and a proper regime, we have not benefited optimally. But there's the, there's the new drive now through irresponsible mining where we are even losing them more. And the interesting thing is that, you see, if you focus solely on the output and say, okay, gold is playing a key role to our economy and therefore let's continue like this, that's a short-term thinking. Yes. Okay, mm. because, because the destructive aspect of generating that GDP is not or is poorly reflected in the GDP calculation. So if you just focus on the GDP and the rest of them, you may not avert your minds to the, to the fact that you face existential threats. Right. And we are already paying the price. We, mm -hmm. we, even if we decide that let's continue like this, so that in the next 20 years or 50 years, Ghana will not be on the face of the earth, we are already paying the price. We are paying the price through higher food prices. You know the interesting thing? Check the Ghana Statistical Service data. Some of Ghana's traditional food basket regions right are now experiencing higher food inflation mm -hmm. they're actually importing food from accra yeah okay mm -hmm. so that that's that, that's concerning look let, let's let's look at this way there can never be an economic recovery in the absence of ecological sustainability there, there can, can never, never be. be economic recovery there can never be growth there can never be development without preserving our planet earth there cannot be Okay, because the point is that the destruction we are causing right now, the GDP, even if we decide to turn the GDP from that sector to correct the environmental effect, it will not be enough. It's not, it's not repairable. So, so, I mean, this is pure wickedness. Let me tell you something. What you see happening right now, mm -hmm. if you examine the slave trade and all that happened, you will exactly. see a similar pattern. It's the same slave trade mentality we are exhibiting in leadership and in management today. Because during the slave trade, there were those who were benefiting from it and wish it could continue. Mm -hmm. and some but if you hear the argument that look, burning small scale mining and destructive mining would have economic consequences, in fact, that's one of the narratives that has prevailed, at least since we started this renewed fight against illegal mining, that it will cost us economically. And so that is not going to be an, an immediate option. And in fact, that has been exhibited by the non-action on the part of the Let president that, on is, that call for the uh, state of uh, emergency to be declared. Let me tell you, that is selfishness. It is greed that assumes that position. It is short-sightedness that assumes that position. Let me tell you something. The president told us that they know how to bring the economy back to life. They don't know how to bring life back, uh, the dead back to life. So if this irresponsible mining is destroying human organs, is causing death, which one should you prioritize? Which one can you bring back? Do you need somebody to remind us of our own lecture slides we presented during COVID? Why are we living a contradictory life? Okay, so please, and if you look at it solely from the GDP point, that's just one line of understanding this whole ecosystem we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. In the development literature today, the discussion is not merely that you are making profit. Even at the private sector level, yes, it's not good enough to say we are making profit. Yes, the yes. quality of the profit, yes. how environmentally consistent, yes. socially desirable, yes. ecologically consistent. Yes. Okay, why are we talking about ESG? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why is Bank of Ghana forcing it down our throat in the banking sector? Why is the National Insurance Commission embracing it? Why is National Pension Regulatory Authority? Why is Securities and National Commission all talking about environmental social governance? Okay. Mm -hmm. if, you, if anyone will assume that that is just private sector issue, at the national level, development today must reflect the five Ps. What are those five Ps? P's. It must be people-focused. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like development if it's people absent. Okay? And, and the reason, and in our part of the world, the reason why we have celebrated growth, positive growth, mm -hmm. meanwhile, millions of Ghanaians are not sure where their next meal will come from, mm -hmm. is that people is actually not the focus of our policy prescription.
we are okay to celebrate positive GDP even if that GDP left millions of Ghanaians behind. And that's why you make the point that even though with the indicators looking positive now, it was at the expense of the Ghanaian people. We, we paid the heavy price. Let for me tell you something. What we are going through is the, mo is the most expensive economic recovery in all our history since independence. It is the most expensive. Yes. What is happening now? Because, because of the price we had to pay to have this limited stability. Okay? Mm -hmm. Look, Ghana, we have, restru we have restructured our debt before. Mm -hmm. Okay? Even in fact, HIPIC itself was a form of debt rest restructuring. It wasn't this big. It's the first time we are restructuring our domestic debt in the magnitude we have seen. That is not the only thing. Look, let me tell you something. Let's not kid about this. We are, in, we, are, we are in a very precarious state, even though we are talking about recovery. Ghana has gotten to the stage where the traditional fiscal consolidation measures, mm -hmm. essentially revenue enhancement and expenditure restraint, that we have used over the years to correct imbalances, yes. are no longer enough. It doesn't work. It's no longer responding. In other words, our health status has gotten to the point where the traditional medicine... It's not working. Okay, they have to upgrade it. Mm. And that is why, yeah, as part of this IMF supported program, yeah, did the did fund did. is saying that fiscal consolidation alone cannot deliver debt sustainability yeah. mm. by 2028. And therefore, in addition to fiscal consolidation, what are fiscal consolidation? Revenue enhancement, Massment. expenditure restraints. Mm. Yeah. We are come to the conclusion that that is not enough. Then we have to go to the next level. What's the next level? Would have been debt restructuring. Yes, yes, yes. We could have focused solely on external debt, like yes. we've done previously now with that also we came to the conclusion that focusing solely on external debt restructuring will not restore debt sustainability and therefore there's no way we can do without restructuring the domestic debt that's why we have to do that triple line <sighs> and this is this is how you should understand it our democracy has become very expensive now so much to the extent that tax revenue from you and i is no longer enough to sustain the state and you should bear in mind that the debt restructuring we've done is a major source of revenue. Because there's space there. Because that's how much has been taken out of people. Well, the finance minister said this at the IMF annual meetings that some $12 billion yeah. dollars had, uh, been, uh, uh, had been saved as a result or, or of... Please, 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 or, please, please. Or, or I, I beg you. For, 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 that for, has as been... A result of the please, debt I beg you. I beg you. You know, <laughs> I beg you. This one, you are stepping on my toe directly. Oh, okay. Relax. Oh, uh -huh. I, I, it's enough. You know, mm -hmm. I'm also conflicted in this matter because the finance minister is also my brother. I'm okay. very conflicted. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, okay. I mean, he's my brother. I won't hide that any day. But he can't say what he's saying. He has to do that because he's a politician. <laughs> it's just like you sometimes. We disagree, but you and I know you shouldn't say what you are saying. <laughs> let's talk, let's talk he, he himself, he knows that you shouldn't say what he's saying. You don't say you, what you might say. Look, you've, we've, I mean, the state has robbed its own people. And look at the state of people today. As a function of our fiscal recklessness, all these painful measures, we have actually forced down inflation, forced up inflation to further minimize the cost of the state. You do not understand what has happened. Yeah, the jump the, inflation the, actually the inflation, the, value. In, the inflation is also part of the strategy. And who suffers for it? It's a double whammy for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I beg you, let's, when we want to say, you, you, it's good that politicians use the right expressions. So you say, look, citizens have sacrificed 12 billion to help the state recover. I will hear that. Don't say you have saved as if it's some constructive thing that has been done. Some innovative you know, thing I that beg you, you have done. People, people to... have died because of that. Yeah. People's livelihoods have been dissipated because of that. People lack meaning to their lives today because of that. People can't fund basic needs because of that. I beg everybody, don't, don't I beg you, it's okay. It's okay, you, it's okay. The reality well, is that the state is altering the lifestyle well, of people. Mm -hmm. right? The state is prescribing lifestyle. We have wiped the middle oh, no, class. No, 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 no. Yes, possible. which wouldn't be the, the role of the state, actually, and all of that. And, I, and as I said, if you put all this in together, we, we come to the conclusion that this is one of the most expensive economic recovery that we, we've, we've, we've experienced. And I think that I hope that we are learning the lessons mm -hmm. so that we amend our ways going forward. Because the point is that this can happen. If you look at the horizon, look, perfect. 
if if you look at the the sources of the fiscal risk mm -hmm. Ghana now and you even don't include environmental restoration mm -hmm. because we've done baseline costing and right. the rest of them there is no way Ghana has a future mm. you know we should be concerned if a rating agency comes to tell us that oh there is no immediate risk of debt default mm -hmm. but the state does not exist solely to service it debt the That's state indeed. has several commitments to the citizens mm -hmm. Okay, the question is, are we allocating optimally to agriculture, to health, to education? We are not. And that is why you, you go and check the budgetary allocation to Ministry of Food and Agri. Check the budgetary allocation to health. Check the budgetary allocation to education. We are not allocating resources optimally to the critical sectors of the economy. If you pick the energy sector alone, and I'm sure, uh, Honorable, yeah, that's your, that's your free elective. Let me put it that way, <laughs> right? That one, I will combine the two of them and do them like this. They are all inside. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you look at the energy sector indebtedness alone, the shortfall from there far outweigh the combined, mm. far outweigh the combined budgetary allocation to Ministry of Food and Agri, Ministry of Health, Education, Roads. Come on. And, 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 and how, 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 how are we as a country? Let's conclude. As a country, how are we able to look at all this data and go to bed and sleep soundly? Are we human beings? How are we able to look at the distraction to our, our, our water bodies, mm -hmm. our environment, and go to bed and wake up and, uh, to, to breakfast? No. Should well, we, we don't need to go for a re-examination whether we are human beings. One basic function God gave man was to preserve the earth. Mm -hmm. It is the first. And, the, the and level you know, of the you know all of us, you see, the point is that people think that because we are in Accra or we are here, we are far removed from the issue. So the question has been that why should we be even having demonstrations in Accra when the <laughs> Kalamse is happening? Because the policy is in Accra. No, because, the, because you know why? It's just a matter of time and it will not be long. When we, def we destroy the rural economy, with water bodies as, as, as water as it embodiment of that raw ecosystem that supports life. And it's no longer sustainable for them to live there. They will come here. And the point is that if, if, the, nest, if the guy in my village is not safe, I cannot assume I'm safe here. No. Okay, it's, well, it's, it's pure wickedness and selfishness and greed. This is the slave, men, slave trade mentality. We are exhibiting with modern day economics. Slave trade mentality exhibited in modern economics. And that reference you made to the inflation, food inflation. If you go on the Ghana Saskal Service site, and, and this is one that we've been studying throughout the week and uh, when we had this conversation. Take a look at this. And so, you know, I'll come to you briefly because yeah. you wanted to make a point briefly and then I'll go to um, Mr. Janapo. If you look at the year on year inflation, food inflation, September, just last, last month, the Savannah region actually leads, and this is one of the food basket areas, just we to bear in, in mind. We are in the harvesting season. And we, and we are actually in the harvesting season, according to Mr. Actually, Dinapo. this is the, this is the overall inflation. Can yeah, they give us the food inflation, the regional distribution yeah. or disaggregation for food inflation? Yeah, that's, so, that's what you know, it uh, is. That's, that's, you see and you Savannah. see Alfred, Eastern yeah. region. Alfred, you know that Eastern, other regions. Abono, I wanted to Abono make, East. And all of that, Alfred, that breakdown. Yeah. I wanted to just uh, thirty-six point four, as you see. In I the want years. to make a point. As you all know, when it comes to this panel, I'm yes. mismatched. You are not the, mismatched. Why? From the policy perspective, I, I, I'm talking. I'm, I think at, at least I'm telling you that when it comes to this, I'm mismatched. So, as because I'm dealing with a professor of economics, I'm dealing with the energy expert, I'm dealing with a businessman. I'm the poli uh, I'm a political science analyst, so I'm a politician. But I want to make a point. You just showed what you showed. Deflation because I quickly I asked I asked uh, uh, someone want something at the beginning of this year there was serious drought in northern Ghana. Prof, I want to know okay. how you think that also plays into because sometimes we have to also learn that there was serious drought in, in northern Ghana. It affected me personally before I, I also farm, I have a farm. That from the rains didn't come when it's supposed to be, and the magnitude of that drought was almost a force majeure. Mm -hmm. Nothing that we prepared for. And so if you now show information that shows that uh, uh what's the name food inflation is rising i understand i, I think that i mean from a post perspective i can say that part of it because 
they have yes i know can you again no so i mean can i can i can i i'm saying that hey hey i'm saying i'm saying hold on i'm saying hold on we have a response hold on yes dr jato please Okay, so that happened because the rains were supposed to come June, July. They never came. They came on August. Our August and our I was in Tumu. It was as dry as hell. So right. So when the food was supposed to come, I think that it didn't come at the right time. And you're saying this this should probably be harvesting time, but almost all the crop is on. Uh, this uh, next month is uh, uh, almost the, the rains are supposed to stop, but most of the corn and maize is still on the farm. So the question I'm asking Prof is that. To what extent? Because this wasn't something that this yeah. wasn't something yeah. that we budgeted for. Okay. It was a force majeure. Yeah, sure. That uh, to what extent has it affected at least the inflation and, and the food inflation you are talking about? Did it have a big impact? Of course. Let me tell you something. From 2021, <laughs> from 2021, yeah. but, but, this dry spell and all those things were not there. Do you know that food inflation in some part of Ghana from 2021, 2022? went as high as 70 percent food inflation so even now it's been coming down so what we are tracking and the effect of the illegal mining just didn't start this year with a dry spell you can see the trend over the years and more in the, the no, did, did, did the dry spell as a debate it did it I mean, like was it did it move okay. the curve so much or it was still on i just want to understand so, whether uh, uh, the extent, how much so, of it was so, budgeted so, for. so we've yeah. had drought in mm -hmm. particular areas largely the northern sector yeah, the, the food all right mm -hmm. i i don't think on my farms i, I had that in in this part mm -hmm. you know we didn't really suffer mm -hmm. suffer that galamsey mm -hmm. does not sit much there oh, yeah. now yeah, yeah. you take the places where's yeah. galamsey mm -hmm. and take that data mm -hmm. i don't think we've had drought there mm -hmm. so you what you've actually had is that you have had farms traded mm -hmm. for mining sites mm -hmm. you also now have water that's supposed to be used yeah. to grow crops, feed the people, mm -hmm. and feed our food basket as a country. Polluted. Also now being polluted the, the, the and food, traded. So that's the, where, the food inflation that's is where it, you have is it. it. Okay. Is it particular well, foods or all foods? Because I want to say something. <laughs> is it particular <laughs> foods or all foods? Look at the this, this, this is what I'm look at the category. <laughs> so because if it's about tz if it's about banku if it's about the food that are produced down there are we seeing is the data showing that you may not see the do, you mean, the, the, the meta is not seen in the fufu no no i'm the not meta is not seen okay. you, you know i'm not talking about it i'm just trying to say that yes. and I like, so, okay. I like, how I like, much yeah. of the drought yeah. has been factored in which particular no, so, okay, okay, drought hold on. is not a I want, story I want, I want, I want, when it comes have to have you, the hold on. Big have you made your point are we talking about the gala because I'm just yes, to, yes, I'm not yes, making yes, my substantive yes, I was just yes. asking prof a question I'd like yes. to make my substantive so, on the gala I will yeah, make that so, uh, but this was just a question to seek clarifications okay so prof we cannot discount that but we should not major on the minor either right because that what we are facing in terms of food inflation that has been high for for some time now it's not just because of this dry spell mm -hmm. and we have been tracking the data over the years okay so the substitution effect and all of that and then even if you look at our gold exports right which has also gone down simply because farmers are trading their cocoa farm land for the cocoa you mean have gone yes down. Yeah. the Cocoa exports, yes, yes has uh -huh. gone down because they are trading their cocoa farmland mm -hmm. and all of that. Let me just share some story, observation, because mm -hmm. we did some study. We visited some of the, those communities. Interestingly, the youth, they no longer want to go into agriculture. No. Okay. No, that, that's not true. Okay. Okay. Some of those, no, no, I'm telling you, that's not true. No, 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 I'm, 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 I'm just being honest. You are talking about where? Where? He's talking about the area. Okay, Galamsey area. Let's say that. Let's say that. Say in Galamsey area. That's what he said. That's what he said. That's what I said. That's what he said. That's what he said. That's what he said. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Gentlemen, hold on. If you are listening to the submission, it will not be have you to be too quick to make an intervention. If you have it, just as you did previously. Okay. When it's time for you to speak, then you would ask the question. Can I? Can I? Uh, Professor Bogdan, con you concluded your point. My, yes. Thank you president. very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think you, you concluded the point. That no, you I was going to say that um, summary. we did some work, and mm -hmm. basically the focus was the mining yeah, areas yeah. and the rest of them, and we visited and interacted. And, and all of that. Okay, so the, the point is that I'm not a security expert, okay. but what we observed 
based on our interactions and all of that, we are not only talking about Ghanaians who are involved in some of these things. I mean, it is true. It right. is transnational. I mean, we met people from um, Niger. Burkina Faso. I mean, who are just migrating to there. those areas right. to participate. And, and, and it's a serious thing. Okay, not to even talk about the economic effects, the security risk, and all of that. I mean, it's. You know, do you know something? This is not something that we should even <laughs> sleep over. I mean, this is, this is serious. Yeah, yeah. Professor Bopin, thank you. Yeah. And uh, 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 there's a data from the Ghana Statistical Service. And if you go to table two, yearly food and non food inflation. Uh -huh. You see, the this red. Is for September, you mean? This is up to March 2024. I okay, deliberately yeah. chose March 2024 to discount the and drought. Uh -huh. <laughs> because then, with and without. Right. So you know what is happening. And Chief, mm -hmm. as you can see, no. This is the non-food, the red. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The green is the food. So and, the and if you look class. at the table, for instance, if you take September 2022, mm -hmm. 38, but 37 is food inflation. Okay. If you take, for instance, 2024, mm -hmm. even January, the inflation is 23, but food inflation is 27. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. non-food is 20. So when you combine that, you see a 23. Mm -hmm. and but the 27, which is the bigger one, mm -hmm. Is the food inflation and that is what impact majority of that is it so okay. almost 44 percent of our household expenditure is on food yes all right so if that sector so, is rising so clearly and then after yes. just bear no, this no, in no, mind no, no. in any no. country okay he in wants to know that maybe no. you want to know the no. split and then you go to the basket itself mm -hmm. Because the CPI has a basket. There's a basket. And, and, and it's weighted. Okay. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Let's 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 and every month they go to the market and check the prices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it tells you, based on the weight, the rate at which the prices are increasing. Okay. So if your food inflation is increasing at this rate, you ought to be very, very worried. Right. And for us, it's, it's a major, major issue. Mm -hmm. But you see, I want to come to your topic. And, and for me, that's the most important thing. Is the economy headed for pre-COVID time, which seeks to paint the economy as moving in the right direction? First of all, look at the Bank of Ghana's Monetary Policy Committee report. Look at the Statistical Service report. And look at even the Ministry of Finance itself, the report. And normally you look at certain indicators like inflation, debt to GDP, your reserves, your trade balance, and some of these key macroeconomic indicators. If you look at inflation, for instance, when we were living office, inflation was around 15%. Today it's around 22%. 22% is very, very high. And like Prof also pointed out, the food inflation is even much, much higher. Yeah. Because it's just an average. Sometimes the averages can be very deceptive. And like you say, in growth rates, if you have the mining sector, discovery of a big mine, you take the value of that mine and add it to your GDP, it raises your GDP very, very high. Mm -hmm. And our GDP will be GDP per capita. So you divide that whole GDP by the total population. And you think that people are better off. Mm -hmm. But in actual sense, like he's saying, 800 people have moved into the po poverty bracket. So yeah, GDP yeah, yeah. alone. And more are joining. Yeah, more. yeah so in GDP. Ghana, water doesn't flow down also. <laughs> so GDP alone is not enough to measure welfare. And that's why now people are talking of inclusive growth and looking at all the SDGs and stuff like that mm -hmm. to drill down and look at the marginalized, the poor, the poor, and gender issues. Two, if you look at the exchange rate, even by the middle of the year, the city had depreciated by about 22%. 22%. I mean, that, that doesn't point to any positive trajectory. 22%. So the Ghana city is amongst the four worst currency in the world. So there's stability now. Stability with 22% depreciation. Stability in 22%. 22% depreciation <laughs> cannot be <laughs> stability. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, yes. hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You let, let him finish. No, maybe. No, no. Let, no. I told you. Stop. No, finish your point. <laughs> <laughs> finish. 
Your debt, your debt increased from 610 billion to 742 billion in six months. That's about 132 billion cities in six months. In 2016, the total debt was 120 billion. The total, Ghana's total debt. But in six months, your debt is moved by 132 billion. And you know why it's moved so? It's on account of Asian rate depreciation. So you can't tell me. The, the, the core debt the, the stock in dollar terms too went up because there was a lot more borrowing. Yes, and, and even domestic borrowing like, is, is government is borrowing like no other person. It is the only and that is what is affecting the private sector and what you call crowding out. Yes. So credit to private sector is reducing. And government is the only player borrowing at very, very high rates. Very, 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 very high rates. And I recall, you know, Prof was my meet. My lecturer, now my friend. <laughs> it's so interesting. Probably he taught us a model, a capital asset price model. You were also in Aqua No, 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 no. Okay. I was in the graduate was there. No, I wasn't. I, I, mean, I didn't have the privilege of coming to a group for no other. He didn't come to the group for the So he missed a lot. Yes, I am. So, and capital has a price in terms of what you call a risk-free rate, which states that if you want to invest in a security, the returns that you get are in two folds. The risk free rate, which is normally government treasury or government bonds. It, no, 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 no. It's actually treasury. Yes. So That's, because exactly. and that one let, let's clarify. Let's it, let's, okay. let's contextualize. There's, 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 like there's right actually here. no risk free instrument Man, in the world. No, now we're coming it's, there. It's a theoretical. Yes. yes. I'm so coming there. Lack of it. Yeah. We look at the closest. Yes. Yes. Which is which, which is, is there. And it's why we call it risk free is that if you don't want to take so much risk, you invest in government bonds. Mm -hmm. And it was assumed that hardly would the government default. Not your government. Hardly. At that time, mm -hmm. it was assumed. So the MPP government has come to domestify or change that narrative, where we say that if you want a safe investment, invest in government bonds. So we are, and now... Today, even the IMF is predicting that, let me just quote it for you, we're going to get to a debt to GDP ratio 80. of 82, is it 86%? Yeah. The IMF itself, not a government of Ghana or any of us, okay. that in the International Monetary Fund predicts that by the end of this year, yeah, our debt to GDP will be 82.9%. If your debt to GDP is 82.9% by the end of this year, you're not making any headway. And you cannot be returning to pre-COVID era. So this idea that we are making some significant progress, mm -hmm. I don't see it. If you take okay. the exchange rate, you take the debt, you take the borrowing, you take uh, credit to the private sector, you take Bank of Ghana itself, it looks like we are headed for a very serious challenge going forward right. in 2025. And finally, even in the energy sector, over the past seven days, they've been shedding load. For one week now, They've been shedding load because they don't have money to buy fuel. The energy sector debt is hitting 2.4 billion. Ghana is not servicing its external debt as we speak. And yet the currency is depreciating at this rate. Uh, uh, Next year, when we start servicing the debt, it means that we need more dollars of foreign currency to service the debt. The debt service has started. It will further... Yes, no, this will be should be correct. It's, it's, the debt service has started. But it's very low. It's it's that's very low. Very, very minimal. I mean, I mean very, very minimal. I agree. Yes. But, yeah. I mean, but, but in 2026, that is when the real hit will come because it won't just be interest payment. It will be both interest and principal. And if you look at that bullet payment in 2026... In 2027... And we must be preparing for those periods. So for me... We are not nowhere near that so-called pre-COVID era at all. But it's back. It's back. back. It's back. Pre -COVID. back. It's back. It's not 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 back. The load shedding was 450 with, okay. megawatts. 450 megawatts. Yesterday. Because Asogli couldn't come on. And the other plants that could come on, government has no money to procure light crude oil for those plants. And so they are shedding load. Today, there will be load shedding. Well, I got a message. In fact, a number of messages about the lights being off in a number of places. So that confirms it. Okay. I'll be back shortly after this quick break. We'll have the final lap of the conversation. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Key Point on TV3. We are live on 3FM 92.7, also on TV3 Ghana on Facebook and DSTV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. And uh, this morning, I've been clothed by Cogra Clothing, uh, the best version of you. Locate Cogra Clothing on the Splinters Road, 18 Junction, opposite the Allied Oil Filling Station, the ground floor, same building with the Ghana Made Store. You can call Cogra Clothing on 244 Two three eight three four one. That's zero two four four two three eight three four one. Or on WhatsApp zero five zero zero nine zero 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 nine nine. That's zero five hundred nine thousand ninety nine. Or zero two four four two three eight three four one. Choose Cobra clothing. Choose right. Um, Doctor Zato. Mm -hmm. Um, you cannot disassociate the impact of illegal mining on this food inflation that we're talking about. And Professor Bopin established that nexus, that connection earlier, with these areas where illegal mining is happening and how it's impacting on even the, the food inflation in there, is it not? Yeah, thank you. No, it's true. But I wanted to start on one of the most often quoted things, mm -hmm. lies, that's like lies, damn lies and statistics. We've also been told that statistics are like a bikini, a very nice two-piece bikini, you know? It tries to expose a lot, but it covers more than it is showing. You are smiling it, it's a lot more when you mention bikini. <laughs> okay, yeah. of course, that's, 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 that's smile. I just, yeah. I just smile about your point. Well, don't you? So they, they, they pretend to open to it, expose a bit, they, the most important things are covered. So that is why sometimes when people we throw around statistics, it becomes difficult, and sometimes we must know what are we have. How do you make me know that? For, for instance, <laughs> <laughs> I just look. I, I, I'm just quoting about it, and that it says that uh, the world economic outlooks predicted an end of year inflation of 15 percent. That is predicting that uh, 2005 to, to be 11, and then consequently after 2005 or so to get down to 18. So it is then for. for Ghana. Yes, I'm, yeah, I'm quoting some of those. We're moving yes. to November. Good. So, so it's it, from 22 to 15. No, they're saying end of. I mean, I'm just. I'm reading. That, no, exactly. that was. They had predicted. That no, is no, no, no. It's the, this, 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 the this reality current. tells you we watch it. Again, again. <laughs> see, so you see what I said about statistics, so, so, right? So, so you now see so, what I'm saying so, about the statistics that this is what it is predicting. This is the, the latest updates from okay. the world government that is saying. No, we're talking so, of so, outer, so we're not talking of predictions. So I'm talking of real empirical evidence. So I'm just telling you, so that is my issue with statistics but then you talked about uh, the food inflation and, and i said yes of course we, we we all eat food and it affects us but that's what i wanted to know one the impact of the drought an unexpected drought, an unbudgeted for drought and a major force major that i don't remember the last time this country has witnessed such a drought okay. now i would think that such a drought would expect will affect food inflation and that it then, then the question becomes what kind of food? I would say that well, the food that is produced in, in that food zone, the Sisala area produces the best maize in the whole wild world. It produces the best maize in the whole world, as affirmed by everything. So you should know that your, your yeah, masters oh, yeah, yeah, will produce, yeah, we'll produce the best yeah. maize in the whole wild world. This very, affected very little of, of If it affected uh, uh, the maize production in Sisala land, if you go to Tumu, Walambele, Sakai, Chalo, Odo, it affected. So that is one of the things. So if you see that the cost of kenke, your kenke is shrinking, or if you see that Banku is getting short, or Akule, or Wakule, everything, they all have an effect on what is happening in the Sisala land. And it all has an effect on what is happening with the meat that has been produced. So I, that's what I was asking. Is it uh, Banku, Wakule, or Kolong, or Tuesday, that, is the, that the, the prices are getting, uh, the inflation is getting high, or okay. is, is what it says? You understand? Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. Now, or is it uh, a PIM or some other things that are produced in the areas? You also mentioned uh, quickly. Oh, Mm. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, very important. Right. Now, it, the youth is not, again, it's possible to, we should be situational specific. It's possible that in the forest areas, when the Galamse area, okay. the, move, the youth is moving away from agriculture. That's true. But if you go to, again, if you go to some of these foodback in the Upper West and in Salad in particular, the youth is moving droves to agriculture. There's no, almost every single teacher, almost every single government worker in this land is food going. Price there. Exactly. But, but I'm saying that, I'm Are talking about this particular that? I'm saying that you, every, every teacher, every government worker that I know, my friends, my colleagues, each one of them have three acres, five acres, ten acres, six acres. It, it, it is even, making, so I'm, so okay, I'm trying to make yeah. a point that okay. the, I, it, there's no exodus of youth living in agriculture and the, unless you have any statistics I, I to, to back that up. I'm not, unless I unless you have yeah. so so the point. You conclude on the point. So what I'm saying is that, yes, it seems if you put the whole thing together, 
that there can be a narrative that at least there is an easing or a, a, an easing of the economic and that the uh, numbers are beginning to get better. Probably not at the rate we want, probably not at the percentage we want, but there seems to be a general idea that the GDP is projected to go up to 4 or 5% that the numbers are getting better, probably not at the rate at which we want. But that can be a conclusion that they are relatively getting better. That's okay. what I wanted to make. Senor. All right, so the so, conversation is really more about Galamse on, on the economy. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, since you've touched this... You know that they, no, they were no, supposed no. to be the I mean, of the law. No, 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 you, 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 when we finish, I'm finding you, because we agreed that we're going to discuss, no, you're going to focus so, 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 and address so, 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 my Galamse. So, 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 you point. You have very limited time on this. So, one, when you talk about stability as an economy, what are you comparing it to? Indeed. So maybe for you are looking at in temporal right. sta 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 stability at, at, at this point, you run the place down, and all of a sudden it wasn't melting as fast. So we have just stopped. It, you haven't taken us back, all right. So if mm -hmm. the dollar today is at sixteen point five, so for the last three weeks it has it, it stayed at sixteen point five. You can talk about relative stability, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that you haven't moved from 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 ten to sixteen in whatever period, a very short period. So maybe the rate at which it was, it's, 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 there's been some pause. Mm -hmm. So that's what you want to talk about it relatively. All right, but things are not great, let us face it. Okay. And our Galamse situation is not making life any better. Mm -hmm. Let me be honest with you. When you look at our elasticity of employment relative to GDP, it's really getting worse. Let's get that clear. Yeah. The youth and all the people looking for three acres and two acres are not real farmers. You don't build an agri an agri an agri uh, sector based on peas and farming. People are doing it as subsistence farming. It means that people are struggling to survive on their regular life. They have to do their own thing to be able to to feed themselves. That is, it's not. I, I, you have to understand agri. I'm, I'm an investor in agri. All right. Mm -hmm. That is not what transforms an agrarian sector. Right. It's peas and subsistence farming. Mm -hmm. What you have actually had right now. With our galamse, the destruction of our water bodies is exactly what has been described. And let's not mix this conversation with what's happening in Tumu. We are talking about the galamse areas, which also feed okay. these areas. Okay. You can't go to those places in Western region that provide us plantain, and you go there, you can't get plantain. They are telling that they're plantain, they are buying it from Accra. I mean, mm -hmm. if you want to be honest, just take your time and check. Sometimes we are importing cassava from countries. There are things that are happening that we see. It, 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 um, uh, my brother, things are not going well because we don't have the base infrastructure to transform agriculture. And the minimum which God has given us, which is our water bodies, we are destroying it. Right. The minimum he has given us, which is our forest reserves, we are destroying it. What will our children eat tomorrow? And that's why I say this matter is so bad. It has gone beyond... The the, 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 the the space of political conversation is a national matter. It's an right. existential matter. And that's why I'm very disappointed in the president and his management of what is happening. Okay. We can't continue this way. You are cutting your 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 your, your nose to spite your face. It is silly. Right. Look, man, okay. it's, there's no right here. Relax. No, Two Round seconds. Relax. There's no right here, bro. My brother. Look, we are we are we are citing we are citing gold. We are citing gold as gold revenue we are getting. Okay. But in the, in, we are we are we are replacing it with our inability to get food for our future. For our cocoa to go. Are we thinking? Thank you, Senor Jose. Sometimes we do that as if we didn't go to school. We were understanding with peer this this is that. But having said that, my finance minister, me with my brother, we've been working hard to correct the wrongs of the. Thank you. Thank you.